You are Locked On Terps, your daily podcast on the Maryland Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? I'm Trey Moore, video content creator for 247 Sports and InsideMarylandSports.com and host of Locked On Terps for the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So thank you for making us part of your day and today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. These days, new potential hires can feel like high stakes wagers for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locks on college terms and conditions apply. I hope you guys are having a good start to your week and a good Monday. I apologize for the late episode. I had a couple of things to take care of today and this morning, but Let's get into it. Ian Martinez, the Terps should reunite with the former Maryland guard. So this could be a really interesting kind of story if this happens, but it sounds like there's a possibility. It's not for sure or anything like that. I'm not going to say it's like a strong possibility, but there's definitely some type of chance that Ian Martinez makes a return to the Maryland hairpin to which I think could really help the Terps going into next year. You guys all know the situation with Ian Martinez. You guys know the story and everything that went on with it. But basically, my own perspective on it was that I thought that the decision to transfer now looks like a good thing. He was a really good player for the Terps. He was a really solid role player. I thought he did a really good job of playing for the team and doing whatever the team needed, and that's what sports is about. That's what basketball is about. That's what team sports is about. That's what football is about. Whether it's playing whatever position the coach wants you to do, playing hard defense, maybe you're not scoring the ball as much as you would like to, maybe you don't have as big of a role as you maybe should or that you do. It's not always about that, though. It's sometimes just about doing what the team needs and Sometimes a basketball team, a football team, a hockey team, whatever sport you like, just needs a guy that will do whatever you need to do. And I felt like that was what Ian Martinez was. He was a utility guy. He played either guard spot. I thought he gave us a ton of energy, and I thought he was a really good player for the Maryland Terrapins. He averaged 5.7 points per game, shot 40% from three. He was a solid player when he was a Terrapin. And and he was a guy that we honestly needed this year. I talked about it a while ago during the season. I said that losing Ian Martinez is one of the biggest reasons now that we are losing game. It really hurt our roster construction and how the team was constructed and kind of how much the guard spot we were ready to play outside of Jameer Young. Deshaun Harris-Smith, I didn't think quite was ready. I think he could have used some time maybe to just come off the bench. He still could have played, but I think playing Ian Martinez in that spot could have helped the Maryland Terps a lot, could have put us in a better position if we would have seen Ian Martinez in there maybe instead of a Deshaun in there, or maybe you can move everybody down and Deshaun still starts. But um, Dante Scott doesn't have to start at the three, and now Deshaun's playing more of the three-ish, and Ian's at the two, and Jameer Young at the one, and then Dante's at the four. I think it would just help balance out our lineup. I know his numbers as a Maryland Terrapin doesn't jump out on you, but I'm telling you, he really helped. And then you guys all know what kind of happened from there. He decided to transfer to Utah State, and looking back on it, it was a great decision for him. I don't know exactly now why he's in the portal, but – Coming from you, going to Utah State, I think was a really good choice for Ian Martinez because he kind of tore it up <laughs> at Utah State. He absolutely succeeded my expectations of what I expected him to be able to do and how good I thought he was going to be, how many points I thought he was going to be able to score, the level of play that I thought he was going to play at. He blew my expectations out. I did not think he was going to be as productive a player, even at a place like Utah State, and he absolutely was. He was a really good player for Utah State, absolutely tore it up, played at a high level, was a starter for them, averaged 30 minutes per game, so he was playing heavy minutes for Utah State. He also scored the ball and shot a really good percentage. He scored 13.3 points per game. That's a really good spot for a guy like Ian Martinez. And he also shot 38% from the three-point line, an excellent spot, and 85% from the free throw line. So he shot the ball well. He was a starter. He averaged a lot of points. He was able to score. And 
He's a guy who just played at a high level for a Utah State team that was a really good team. Uh, they got crushed in the second round of the tournament, but the Utah State team was a really, really top-end team that was ranked in the top 25 for a lot of the year. They were a really good team in that conference, and Ian Martinez was arguably, you could say, their best player. I don't know that roster thrown out, but I do know that Ian Martinez was definitely one of their better players. So I'm looking at Ian Martinez and his production at Utah State and what he brought to Utah State and how he played as a player. And I think the reunion with Maryland could make a lot of sense and could really help the Terps. So apparently he, I don't know exactly how it's happened. I think he reached out to Maryland, I think is kind of how it happened. And it looks like now it's a possibility and it's on his list. But I think that Kevin Bullard should push for this kid. I don't see why not. We have three spots left, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, okay. Well, yes, we brought in Jacoby Gillespie at the guard spot, who I think is going to be awesome. I think he's going to be one of the better players in the Big Ten. Still has three years of eligibility. I think he's a perfect player that you want to bring out of the portal. Has a chance to be an all-Big Ten type of player when it's all said and done. And then you also brought in Rodney Rice who's also going to be a really high-level player for the Terp coming from Virginia Tech. He's a really good shooter, can create his own shot. He also can get to the rim if he needs to, but this really excites me as a shooting ability. So he brought in those two guards, but Deshaun is gone. Lamoth is gone. We're going to talk about those guys next. And it's like we have three spots. Of course, I would like to get another big man and also another three, four type of guy. But I don't want – I wouldn't mind using one of the spots on another guard. I don't think you can have enough guards. And I don't know exactly how this shapes up. I feel like Coach Wheeler loves Deshaun, so I'm not saying Deshaun would come off the bench. But if you had all those players, Jacoby Gillespie starting, I think Rodney Rice has a good start at, shot at starting. And if you had Ian Martinez as well, it would be kind of weird after the season that he had to – not start him and of course you have Deshaun there and then Jahari Long still there and so it's interesting but I don't think that's a problem you have to worry about I think that's a good problem to have having too many good players where exactly do they fit and you got to keep them happy but I think there's a number of reasons why we should bring him back he plays super hard I talked about it he plays super hard he's energetic I feel like he doesn't bring a bad attitude and those are the kind of guys you need you guys you need guys that when you're down by seven against Wisconsin in the start of the first half you need someone that's going to bring a bunch of energy whether it's coming off the bench starting the game and he's going to help make one of those hustle plays or one of those plays that a guy's not really supposed to make but makes that play just because he's playing hard and he makes a momentum play and he dives after a ball and saves it those type of plays is the type of player that Ian Martinez is um and I got to I don't get to watch him a ton at Utah State but I know that he's played with a lot of energy played really hard and I think we could use one of those guys and he's also improved a lot he just can really score the ball now like this guy isn't the player that he was at Maryland he was a good player at Maryland and we did not want him to go because it really did hurt us like I talked about it forced players in the roles early on like Kaiser and Deshaun and Jameer Young had to really carry the load, it felt like, offensively. But he still improved a ton going to Utah State and showing what he could do. So I think he got his confidence at Utah State that he could be a top-end player for a team and he could be a contributor for, contributor for a team like a Big Ten. And it's like that confidence grows. You can really do a ton of stuff with that. And I think that really could help the Maryland Terrapins having a confident guy that can score the ball. I think that's a really good player that brings energy, like I said. And then also he's shooting a really good percentage from the three-point arc. We need three-point shooting. Shooting 38%, that's way above what Maryland shot last year. Guys in the high 30s, low 40s, that's Pretty high-level stuff, and those are guys that you can't really ignore. And with the shooting of Rodney and Gillespie, and I'm trying to think of who else. I mean, really, those two in this right now in the starting lineup that we brought. And if we bring another really solid shooter like Ian Martinez, I didn't. I never really thought of him as a high-volume shooter at Maryland, but the percentages don't lie. And having another guy like that can really help the Turks. The thing is, I don't know if it'll happen. I don't know if it's feasible. I don't I don't really know the ins and outs of it. This stuff is kind of all you just kind of go off the reports. I do know there's some type of communication. I don't know if he'll schedule a visit because like it's like 
he already was a Maryland Terrapin for a year. Like, does he need a visit to come back and see what's up with it? Or can he kind of just know what it is? Maybe he wants to talk to Kevin Willard in person. It's a different coaching staff. So it, it'll be interesting to see if he decides to come back and decides to trust Kevin Willard again and come back to Maryland. He just was here, so maybe he could decide that that's not the best option. If I had to guess, I'd probably say he'd probably go somewhere else, but he is a guy that I think the Maryland Terrapins could really use and could really help the Terps program and put us at a much better spot than we previously were. A couple of Terps got new homes. Are they going to succeed? Did they choose the right schools? And what did they teach me about recruiting in today's game? I will tell you about that after this ad from LinkedIn Jobs. These days, new potential hires can feel like high stakes wagers for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you need to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. A lot of people need jobs right now. And if you want to find someone amazing for your company, LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. So post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash thoughts on college. That's LinkedIn.com slash thoughts on college. So post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Make sure you guys go check out LinkedIn Jobs. All right, so former Terps got their new homes. I'm talking about Jonathan Lamothe and Jamie Kaiser have found their new homes. And you guys remember, both of those guys entered the transfer portal after having weird years for the Maryland Terrapins. Kaiser was a guy that had an up-and-down year. I thought had a chance to be a really good player in the future for Maryland basketball, but I also thought – he kind of had a limited athletic ceiling of what he exactly he could become because I never thought he was necessarily the best athlete, the most explosive athlete. So it was hard for him to kind of find shots when it wasn't catch and shoot and create shots off the dribble and get to the rim, even though he had good size overall. But it was interesting season for those two. Jonathan Moe didn't really play much for us, didn't really average very many minutes. Didn't look great when he played. I think it's because like it's like you're just thrown in there and it's like you're not really ready to go. You're probably not getting the reps in practice. You might be playing a good amount of scout team in practice. It just depends. And it's like you kind of just get thrown in the fire and it's like I'm not used to it yet. I'm not ready for this level of play. Yes, I'm practicing against it every day, but he just didn't look comfortable yet. But that's nothing new for a freshman. Most guys aren't going to come in and be all-stars right away and look super comfortable and play an old man's game and be a veteran on the court. Like, that's not what's going to happen. The freshmen the freshmen are supposed to be freshmen, and the seniors are supposed to be seniors, and the freshmen are supposed to make freshman mistakes, and the seniors are supposed to make seniors mistakes. That's just how it is. But I thought that he still had a chance to be a good role player for Maryland in the future. I never thought he would be a star for Maryland basketball, but I thought he had a chance to be a good role player for the Maryland Terrapins. But it's just crazy how fast things have changed because – we went from having this class, this 2023 class, that was supposed to change Maryland basketball. That was – I don't want to say change Maryland basketball because we haven't been in, like, a horrible spot. Like, we've been a team that's been ranked consistently. Uh, we've made March Madnesses pretty consistently. Like, Maryland basketball overall is a pretty good program. We didn't have our best year, of course, but I do think this 2023 class was supposed to be a class that really made a difference because it was three guys – all from the DMV area that it felt, and they were all pretty highly ranked, all four stars at a certain spot. And time moves fast. Freshman year's over, and it's like only Deshaun is left out of those three, and it's just kind of crazy to think about how much happens in a year and how much changes now that two-thirds of them are gone and off to other spots. And I do have a quick take on this. I didn't want to make this the whole segment and talk about this take. But I do kind of think there was something to learn about that class. I don't want to say you don't want to recruit at a high level because you absolutely do. And I think part of it was they just didn't pan out quite with Maryland and they weren't the players that Kevin Willard kind of thought they could be. But I do think there's a part of it that is looking at today's game and saying the transfer portal might be more important. 
how do I say this exactly? I don't want to say more important, but I want to say the transfer portal could affect your team a lot more than the recruiting and could help better than recruiting and could be the way to go. Might depend on the program, might be depend on the type of recruits you can get and the type high level players that you can get. But a lot of teams that are winning nowadays have really solid transfer portal class. They're bringing in really high levels. It's not all about the one and dons. It's not about the freshmen coming in and making an impact. It's about getting really solid two, three year players in the portal that can really shape your program. I think I don't think that's a crazy take to say that now that's kind of the new meta and can be the way to go about things. Just the thing that you kind of have to look at when you think about this class and how it didn't really come along. I think you just have to kind of think about it that way and think about how maybe it's like the portal might treat Maryland better. We're going to see this year because this year's team is more portal related, more portal recruited. Yes, we have five star Derek Queen and Julian Reese is still there, but I do think that we're going to see this year if a lot of it was more portal led or if it's better to recruit. Crew. I mean, it's always great to bring in a guy like Derek Queen, but everyone's not going to come in and be a Derek Queen. But my point is, it's it's just kind of crazy how fast things have changed, and it's hard for freshmen to adjust immediately. And it's like if things aren't going their way. I know this isn't all freshmen, but it's like a lot of them are going to leave and go somewhere else just because they think they fit in better. And you learn more about yourself. You learn more about where you actually fit in because a lot of where you go to your first year, your freshman year is more about where the rankings say about you. I know the schools have to actually offer you, but a lot of it's more about where they rank you and all that type of stuff instead of like, oh, this is the school that I should be going to. And this is a school that like, this is a real school that wants me, a school that I can play at, a school that I can be high level at. I think that's a lot of what the portal is now. And that really helps people find the new homes. That's why a lot of me is pro portal and not over not pro portal i know it changed the landscape of the sport and it's a lot about just the nil and how fast can kids get their money and whatever but a part of me is like it's just like these kids get ranked and they get all these offers out of high school and yes they might have been really good high school plays but Maybe they're not ready to play at a University of Maryland. Maybe they're not a Big Ten guard. Maybe they're not an Alabama football player. Maybe they're more of a smaller school type of football player, but maybe they can go there and be successful. And maybe that's just how it has to be And to allow these kids to kind of get in their best spot. It's not always about going to the highest level spots and playing for the highest level programs. Maybe the portal is the best way to go. And that's what happened with Kaiser and Lamothe. Uh, I kind of ranted for a little bit, but basically Kaiser is transferring to Butler, which is a good spot to go. They were 9-11 and 11 in conference. He could come in and make an impact to that program. And I want to say something about the Big East and Butler. Big East, arguably, I saw a couple tweets about a couple that a couple people that I follow on Twitter tweeted about. The Big East right now could be the best conference in all of college basketball. Call me crazy. Look at how UConn struggled through the Big East versus how they struggled through the March Madness. It's a big difference. And a lot of the Big East teams, Creighton, and a lot of those other Big East teams are really good programs. They should have probably got more teams in than they actually got. Like, you could have argued for a lot of those teams to make the tournament. Of course, UConn was great this year. Marquette was great. Creighton was great. You could have argued that Seton Hall should have gotten in. You could have said that St. John's could have gotten in. You could have said maybe Providence could have gotten in. And I think he can go there and play well. And Jonathan Lamothe is going to an HBCU in North Carolina, AT&T. And that's also a really good spot for Lamothe. I think he can go in and make an impact. And those are two guys that kind of fit my example that maybe they just weren't Big Ten Maryland basketball type of guys and they can go somewhere else and make impacts. And I think that's perfectly fine and i think the portal really helps guys not get stuck in places they don't want to be their queen is going to bring winning to maryland basketball i'll tell you about that after this ad from FanDuel. it's playoff time in the nba and nhl baseball is in full swing and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. You guys have to get on FanDuel for 
this offer you they're not offering this anymore so make sure you get FanDuel. found everything from slash shots to home runs to slam dunks and all on the app that is safe secure and easy to use what are you waiting for visit fanduelcom slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win FanDuel, america's number one sports book their queen is absolutely going to bring winning to the terps i want to talk about this a little bit that their queen's high school montverde finishes number one in the high school rankings and their queen might have just been part of the number one high school program basketball programs maybe ever and what they did as a montverde team it's pretty spectacular it's pretty cool what they were able to accomplish to play a national schedule like they do and to experience winning like that and winning every single game that's pretty high end stuff and i know i know i know they have the most stacked roster you'll see they have cooper flag that that kid's the number one player in the class and going to duke and you guys probably already know a lot about him but i'm really high on that kid i think he's gonna be a really good player at duke that kid probably a number one pick. He's that type of guy. His game, the way he plays, he's going to be a starter right away for Duke. He's even younger than he's supposed to be because he reclassified up. When you start doing stuff like that, you know you're going to be a high-end player. But Cooper Flag is a really good player. Play like with other great players like Liam McNeely. And I know a lot of people thought Liam might tr- – try and go to Maryland and team up with their queen because their queen was trying to get him to Indiana. And it's kind of good for us that Liam decided to decommit from Indiana. I think that was a good for Maryland just because we don't want to see that kid in the Big Ten because that kid can shoot the lights out and he's going to be really high-end players. And there's other players down that roster. But my thing is, like, for a team to go undefeated like that, it just shows that their queen is going to bring a winning type of attitude and knows how to win. Those guys know how to win. I mean, I'm not very many teams were late in games with them, but they just know how to practice like winners. They know how to play like winners. They probably know how to eat like winners. Montverde prepares you for basketball after high school. I think that's what's big about Montverde is that they prepare you for basketball in college. And that's what's really important about Derek Queen going there. I bet how much he's learned and how they kind of do things and it's probably a little bit different than what a lot of people do but plenty of players went to montverde like d'angelo russell went to montverde um it's a there's a ton of really high-end players Cade cunningham went to montverde ben simmons went to montverde there are so many different players rj Barrett went to montverde academy there are so many different players that went to montverde and a lot of them end up being really good player and that's my point they bring that winning attitude for montverde they do things differently there it's really to prepare you and then not only does their queen come from montverde but i heard there was a report i don't know how much truth there is to this that he missed being home a little bit so that combination of wanting to probably come home being able to spend time with his friends and family and coming from mont burwell also getting that experience in florida as one of the, the top program right now in high school basketball i think that's really going to help the terps he's going to be ready to play for the hometown crowd but he's also going to be ready to go at it and play winning basketball and he also wins co-mvp at the mcdonald's all-american game He's been playing at a high level. He's been doing some really cool stuff for the Terps, and I think he's got a chance to just be a really good Maryland Terrapin. But I want to kind of give him his props for that. I mean, you just don't see guys go undefeated in high school playing the kind of schedule that they play. Maybe some school out there in Idaho goes undefeated in high school basketball because they played and teams. But you don't usually see high-end teams that play national schedule like Montverde does go undefeated and win the way the type the way that they did and they beat on um, PVI Deshaun Harris's old team in the championship who has a ton of good player they have a Duke commit Darren Harris that's really good and I just wanted wanted to give Derek Queen his props because he's ours now he's a Maryland he's a Terp and I want to make sure to gas this up as much as I possibly can because I honestly don't know how long he's going to be here for. And so if it's one year, if it's two, if it's three, if it's four, however much it is, I'm going to appreciate him because I know he's going to be a really high-end player for Maryland basketball. That's all we have for today. Thank you for listening to Locked on Terps. Make sure you like and subscribe. We're here every day talking Maryland football and basketball. So thank you for listening to Locked on Terps.